Alright, so this video is going to be a bit different than most on this channel. It doesn't involve things related to space, but it does involve engineering. And I really want this channel to be more of an engineering channel with emphasis on space than a space channel with emphasis on engineering. So I'm going to make this video because this is a topic that I feel there's a lot of misconceptions around and someone needs to explain what's really going on from an engineering and physics-based standpoint on it. So with the rise of self-driving cars, you have, you know, tons of companies trying to get into this market. Tesla already has self-driving cars on the road. Google's been trying to do it for years. Uh, BMW and Mercedes are doing it now. You know, tons of self-driving cars. It's becoming super popular, and it's very likely that a high percentage of vehicles on the road in the next few years are going to be driving themselves. So a lot of people have started bringing up the moral implications of a self-driving car online. These situations usually include a self-driving car that has suffered a sudden brake failure and a group of pedestrians crossing the road. Now the car can either choose to continue going straight and probably kill these pedestrians or it can choose to swerve into a barricade or something which will probably kill the driver. And these situations really don't make any sense because sudden brake failures don't happen. First of all, brakes failing is incredibly rare. You really don't have many situations where that will be an issue. And second of all, even if one mode of braking fails, there's still multiple modes to slow down a car. You know, everyone knows that you have your brake pads that clamp onto a disc in the wheel and it slows the wheel down through friction. But you've also got engine braking, which is where with a gas car or a diesel truck, I guess you could, you know, internal combustion engine. Basically, you cut off fuel flow to the engine so that way the pistons, which are still connected to the wheels, and the pistons will keep moving up and down because of that, they will have to compress air, but there won't be any explosion because there's no fuel. So they compress the air, which takes energy out of the wheels and slows the wheels down, but then they don't get energy from an explosion. So overall you have a braking force on the car. Now, engine braking isn't that effective, but it does work to slow it down. Uh, also with electric cars, like the Tesla, you have engine braking, well they probably don't call it that, but it is engine braking, I guess, it's motor braking, where you just put power through the electric motors in the opposite direction, so you switch your voltages, and that will have a braking force on the wheels. Actually, this electric braking is the main way that the Tesla slows down up to a certain speed. So if you're traveling, you know, in a parking lot or something, you're not going over, say, 20 miles an hour, and when you hit the brakes, you're probably just using electricity to slow down the car. It's a bit more complicated than that, but basically that's how it works. Uh, there's also the emergency brake or parking brake, as it's sometimes called. That is another method to slow down the car. And the chances of a parking brake failing are even more astronomically low than the chances of both your engine and your regular disc brakes failing because the parking brake is a purely mechanical system, there's no hydraulics involved, there's no electricity involved, it just, you know, it's a physical connection, and unless your car is like rusted and 50 years old, that's probably not going to fail. And the chance of all three failing simultaneously, I don't know if that would ever happen in the length of time we have left in the universe, you know, until heat death. So really, a sudden brake failure isn't an issue we need to worry about. So in these moral situations, basically the safest solution is always to slow down the car. You never want to swerve, you never want to plow into people. To slow down the car, if you do hit people or an object, you want to be doing it at a slower speed. Now, another ethical situation I've seen, this was actually in a Veritasium video I just saw recently. The situation that was in that video was there was a truck with a bunch of stuff on the back, right in front of the self-driving car, and something fell off the back of the truck in front of the self-driving car, and the, the car had to choose between swerving left into an SUV or swerving right into a motorcycle. This situation also doesn't make any sense because the safest solution, again, is to just apply the brakes. As long as the wheels um, to the road surface has more friction than whatever object is falling off the back of the truck has against the surface of the road, then the car will be able to slow down faster than the object that's falling, because they're both moving at the same speed to start with. 
and I would, I don't believe there's that many objects being transported by truck that would have that high of friction compared to a car's wheels. So really, in every every you know conceivable situation where something falls off the back of the truck, if you just apply the brakes, you aren't going to hit it. You don't need to swerve at all. Never. And with the reaction time of a self-driving car, the chance of it hitting something that fell off the back of a truck is effectively zero. So, so again, this moral situation is not going to be a problem in reality. So that's really all I have to say about these moral situations involving self-driving cars. They don't really make any sense when you look at the engineering and physics side of the problem. And really, self-driving cars are going to save so many more lives than they could possibly worry about ending due to the car deciding who to kill.